Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My apologies on behalf of Council for us starting this meeting late, but uh, we had a meeting just uh, prior to this, and one of my colleagues talks way too much, and I'll leave it for you to figure out which one it is. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Good evening. Yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Richard Stewart, and on behalf of City Council, I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. This is a public hearing into the bylaws that will be introduced to you in a moment by the City Clerk. Council for the City of Coquitlam has given first reading to these bylaws and has directed that a public hearing be held. Staff from the City's Planning and Development Department will present a summary of each proposed bylaw at which point the floor will then be open to anyone in attendance that wishes to express his or her views on the proposed bylaw. Those that have given, those that have pre-registered will be given first opportunity to speak. I stress to you all that this is a public hearing. It's an opportunity for anyone who has a view on the proposed bylaw to make that view known to council members. Council members are here with an open mind and are here to listen to your input. No one has prejudged the outcome of these bylaws. But Council has asked that we enforce certain rules related to this, primarily to make sure that everyone feels comfortable in the chambers. Um, so this is not a question and answer period. It's not an opportunity to debate the merits of any of the proposed bylaws, either with Council members, with staff, or with those in the audience who might have a different opinion than your own. So we ask that you restrict your comments to the proposed bylaw, be, brief, be as brief and concise as possible, we ask speakers to limit themselves to five minutes in order that everyone gets a chance to speak. You can speak more than once, but if you've got more good stuff, you have to get to the back of the line, please. I ask that the audience be respectful of each speaker and allow that speaker to make his or her point without interruption. Please refrain from booing, from clapping, from cheering or jeering any of the uh, speakers or any of the presentations made tonight. Uh, as chair of the hearing, I've been asked to conclude any presentation that does not relate to the bylaw that becomes repetitive or which uh, becomes abusive. Please note, if you wish to provide a written submission to be included in the record of the meeting, we're not allowed to receive anything after the public hearing. So before that item is adjourned, you must hand in any written comments for the permanent record to the clerk's desk. Immediately following adjournment of the public hearing tonight, a regular council meeting will convene in order that council may give consideration to items on the public hearing agenda as well as a council agenda. However, if during the public hearing council requests further information or a member of council requests additional time, we may defer an item uh, from consideration at the tonight's uh, council meeting. I'll now call on Mr. Gilbert to introduce the bylaws on tonight's agenda and the planning and development staff to make a presentation on the first item. Thank you, Your Worship. First item this evening, item one, is an application to amend citywide official community plan bylaw 3479 and Coquitlam zoning bylaw number 3000 in order to revise the land use designation and zoning of 525 and 535 North Road. These bylaws are bylaws number 4551 and bylaw number 4552. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Your Worship and members of council. My name is Chris Jarvie, development planner of the City of Coquitlam. I'm here tonight to present item one, which is an OCP amendment application and a rezoning application for properties at 525 and 535 North Road. The properties are on the east side of North Road and north of the intersection of North Road and Austin Avenue. The sites are currently zoned CS1 service commercial and CS2 limited commercial. And currently on the property, there is a restaurant as well as an automotive repair facility. Sorry. Um, the zoning to the east of the property is P1 Civic Institutional, where the Coquitlam College is. To the south is McDonald's Restaurant, which is zoned CS1. To the north is zoned C2, it's a general commercial <laughs> building. And across the street is Lougheed Mall, which is designated high density uh, mixed use commercial in the um, City of Burnaby's OCP. The OCP land use designation on the properties is general commercial, and they're in the Lougheed neighborhood plan. The adjacent lands surrounding the property to the north and south are also de designated general commercial. To the east is designated uh, school. The property is located approximately 400 meters from the Lohu Skytrain Station and is designated as core in the city's uh, transit-oriented development strategy. 
This strategy envisions that the core areas will accommodate higher densities to support transit ridership, and this application complies with the applicable policies of the TDS as outlined in the first reading staff report. <clears throat> the applicant has proposed to amend the OCP land use designation to designate the property Transit Village Commercial, as well as rezone the property to C7 Transit Village Commercial. The purpose of the application is to construct a mixed-use development uh, with a 28-story residential tower, a three-story, uh, three-unit townhouse building, as well as commercial units at grade along North Road. The apartment building will contain approximately 218 units, and the mix of the units will be approximately 55% will be one-bedroom or one-bedroom den units, 34% will be two-bedroom or two-bedroom den, and 11% will be three-bedroom units. All three townhomes are designated to be three bedroom, or sorry, two bedroom units. And of the units, 10% are designed to be adaptable units. The, build, the residential building's primary axis is near the corner of the new north, um, east west road along Whiting Way, uh, near the north end of the site. And uh, all five commercial units are located uh, oriented towards uh, North Road. Through the rezoning application, staff has secured a number of transportation network improvements to support this application and improve vehicle and pedestrian movements. These uh, improvements include widening of North Road through road dedication, provision of a new multi-use multi pathway along North Road, provision of a new east-west road at the northern end of the property, provision of a new statutory right-of-way to accommodate an east-west pedestrian walkway along the southern edge of the property, and widening of Whiting Way through road dedication. Staff are recommending second and third readings to bylaws 4551 and 4552 at this time. And should ground council grant second and third readings to these bylaws, staff would prepare a report for fourth reading and DP authorization, which would include greater details pertaining to the form and character of the development, and that would be presented at a future upcoming council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. I know the speaker's list has uh, the applicant and architect here, Dion, Dion Dallasalle and uh, Robert Duke from CDA Architects. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Dion Dallasalle, the development manager for the ONI Group for this project. Um, just wanted to give a very quick um, uh, introduction to the project and uh, introduce you to the team that we brought tonight. Uh, Robert Duke from Christy Akiakos Architects, the project architect. Uh, Doran Fishman from Eckford & Associates, the landscape architect, as well as Yulia Liam. She's here to- I'm sorry, uh, excuse me. Councillor Reed's in the chair. Go ahead, continue. And uh, Yulia Liam uh, from Bunton Associates, the traffic engineer for the project are all here to answer any specific questions that you might have for us. Um, this is a great opportunity for Ani uh, to move forward with a mixed-use development on transit. We've been uh, successful with two developments here in Coquitlam Oasis on Glen Drive and uh, under, currently under construction right now, 1123 Westwood. Um, both are mixed-use developments, residential, commercial opportunities. Um, so we're quite excited about this site and the proximity to the transit. Um, a couple of uh, quick notes about the development that uh, the staff touched on was the 10% um, three beds uh, in the development as well as 10% of the units will have uh, adaptable uh, built to the City of Coquitlam adaptable, gu adaptable guidelines. Um, we have uh, been in the queue, the uh, pre-application application, worked close, closely with staff on on the site plan and have been able to come up with some solutions for the vehic vehicular traffic, adding the road on the north side of the site and then the pedestrian thoroughfare on the south side of the site. Um, the last item I wanted to quickly touch on before Robert uh, talks about the, the site plan and the architecture of the project was um, the community benefits uh, with the project. Um, we will be um, making a payment towards the Berquitlam CAC. 
um, and we will also be making um, a $400,000 uh, upgrade that will go specifically to the Brookmere Park. So, uh, you know, with, with the new residents in the neighborhood, that should be a great park upgrade. So here's Robert Duke to speak to the architectural and uh, yeah. site context. Thank you. Good evening. Your name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> Robert Duke, 71550 Beatty Street, Vancouver, Victor 6 Bob, 2L3. Uh, tonight we're proposing a 28-story... Uh, <clears throat> Could you pull the mic down so that we can... Thank you. Perfect. Sure. Okay. Uh, we're proposing a 28-story mixed-use residential commercial building with 181,000 square feet of residential, 10,000 square feet of commercial for 191,000 square feet at an FAR of 4.5, uh, total amenity of 19,000 square feet, both that's a combination of indoor and outdoor amenity space. 218 units, um, three and a half, four and a half levels of below grade parking, and uh, we have 10% uh, adaptable units provided as well. 10% what? Adaptable units. Thank you. So we're located between North Road and Whitting Way, between Cochrane and Austin Avenue, the proposed site. As uh, was introduced earlier, we are within the 400 meters of the SkyTrain station, placing us in the transit-oriented development strategy area. Part of our proposed um, development is to extend Brookmere Avenue to connect from Whittingway to North Road. This is going to be area that's taken off the north portion of the site. Adjacent to us across North Road is the Lowheed Town Center, which is per currently going through its new OCP. Uh, and another amenity to the east is the Brookmere Park, which uh, plays into our proposal. We've got the new Evergreen Line, which is currently be cons being constructed along North Road, and the existing Millennium Line and SkyTrain Station. Uh, it's approximately about a 10-minute walk from the uh, Lohe Town Center Station, which adds to the uh, viability of the project. Site context to the north seems to be cut off at the top. Uh, there's a Two, two, a three-story residential commercial project to the north of the site, a uh, single-family residential to the northeast, the Coquitlam College is to the east, uh, three-story residential to the southeast, and uh, McDonald's to the south of the site. This photograph is from the northeast corner showing the site, which is currently a two-story building. From the southwest corner of the site, it's an existing one-story commercial building. From the northeast corner, looking down towards the site along Whitting Way. And from Whitting Way at the southeast corner of the site, looking towards the site. We have the, exist the old property line shown to set the, uh, the background for what the proposal entails. And now we've got the new property lines indicated in yellow. These new property lines allow for a 2.4 meter road dedication along Whitting Way, 11.95 road de dedication to the north of the site, and a 3.5 road dedication uh, along North Road. For the 11.95 road, de road dedication on the north, this is where there's going to be an extension of Brookmere Avenue connecting from Whitting Way to North Road. Along with the extension of Brookmere Avenue, there's going to be a 1.5 meter sidewalk and a 2.2 meter landscape boulevard, so a, a real continuity of the existing sidewalks along North Road and Whitting Way, which will be upgraded with the site. At the south of the site, we're proposing a, um, a uh, sorry, it's just cut off at the top. So it's indicated that there's a 4.8 meter statutory right of way for a pedestrian mid block. Uh, walkway going from Whitting Way to North Road. This is the site has got quite a grade to it, so this portion of the site does take into account um, adaptable adaptable standards. So it's totally accessible for people in wheelchair. There will also be improvements along North Road, which will allow for new on-street parking to be provided, and on-street parking will be maintained along Whitting Way. 
adjacent to the access to the site. The setbacks for the project are 1.5 meter along North Road, 1.5 meter along the new Brookmere on the southern portion where it's commercial, a three meter residential setback along Brookmere, and a three meter residential setback along Winning Way. Access to the site is off of Winning Way from the Park 8, which brings access to the loading and parking, commercial loadings towards the south, straight down from the driveway off of uh, Winning. It lead, the access leads into a retail parking area, which, which has a gate going further down into the uh, access to the residential parking. From the retail parking, there's a connection going straight down to North Roads, allowing um, retail, par retail shoppers to have uh, easy access without having to worry about the grades of the site from North Road sidewalk into the parking area. Five units of retail have been provided, and there's a variety of scales of sizes that have been uh, provided, which has been considered in terms of uh, retail, retail opportunities, ranging from 1,100 square feet to 3,000 square feet. A couple of plazas have been created along North Road, one which is at uh, the terminus of the mid-block um, mid -block plaza, which is at the terminus of the mid-block walkway between North Road and Whitting Way. So there's a small seating area and just a small gathering area. A uh, second public plaza is created in front of the two retail units that are at the north end of the site on North Road. Level two, as we go up to Whitting Way, is the entrance into the residential tower. Another large uh, entry plaza has been created for residents and for general pedestrians. Um, the site's been activated all, along all frontages of the, propo of the proposal. Along Brookmere, there's uh, access to a uh, guest entry suite, which is treated similarly to a uh, townhouse entry. Uh, along Winning Way, there are three townhouses that have independent uh, front doors and accesses off the sidewalk. So the, so the site is totally engaged um, on all four sides. From the residential tower going into a lobby, um, there's the, all of level two is primarily amenity space with media room, lounge, fitness, yoga rooms, as I said before, the um, guest suite. And then there's the townhouses that are uh, off the courtyard amenity space. Level three is one floor up. It's where there's, uh, it's the beginning of residential. It's showing there's a variety of unit types from one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. It's also indicating the adaptable bed adaptable bedrooms. Uh, there's also access from the core to an urban agriculture amenity on the roof of the commercial facing North Road. It has a stair that also on the north, on the south side of the amenity area that goes straight down to the lounge on the level two. And then townhouse roof decks. This is a typical, typical tower floor showing size of the two bedroom units, uh, 820 square feet, one bedroom, den 540, Two bedroom unit, 800 square feet, one bedroom and den, 540 square feet. Two bedroom, 800, one bed and adaptables, 530 square feet. And then a three bedroom unit placed on the southeast corner, which has the prime views uh, according to market studies at just under 1,000 square feet. Perspe southwest perspective of the um, tower, showing the retail as it steps up from the south portion of the site, the retail steps upwards to the corner retail, it turns the corner onto Brookmere, and similarly the tower is also ha has a form which is um, stepping as towards the top of the building, it steps towards the north and has an expressed roof element, the shade that faces out towards the south, uh, allowing for um, shading for penthouse decks. This is from the, nor from the northwest, showing the retail wrapping around to Brookmere Avenue, from North Road, and from Whitting Way, showing the uh, stepping townhouses that go along Whitting Way towards the tower, and then the entry plaza into the tower on the north uh, east corner. Perspective showing the south uh, southwest corner, which is the mid-block connection, and the the mini plaza, which is uh, animated by a feature graphic. It'll be, that'll be integrated into the wall of the building along the mid-block walkway. And this will be integrated with the North Road 
corridor enhancement plan and the graphic will be determined as we work our way through that. On the sidewalk along the retail, there's a double, a second row of inner trees that between the, the main public sidewalk and the retail units with um, integrated benchings and seating with the, that we can get into with the landscape architect. This is the northwest corner of the site showing the a feature retail unit which turns the corner and will become a quite a nice um, retail space that has the public plaza at the corner. Again, there's another feature graphic that's integrated into the art, pro art program and then up towards Winning Way where the residential tower entry plaza is on the uh, extension of Brookmere Avenue. This is the tower entry perspective at the northeast corner. It's also a large plaza, which is both for residents and general public, and is the beginning of the Brookmere extension down towards North Road. There's been a, a lot of wood incorporated into the project along the ground plane. In terms of the use of benches, uh, the soffit at the entrance to the tower is wood, the um, canopy into the tower is wood, and this factors into some of the design components of the tower. These are the townhouses going along with the southern portion of Whitting Way up towards the north where we have the entrance into the parkade um, and the loading area which is screened and integrated well into the massing of the townhouses. The townhouses step towards, gradually step upwards towards uh, Brookmere and uh, wood fencing has been incorporated. Again, more tactile wood elements are incorporated which starts to lend itself to some of the coloration of spandrel panels which um, play against the wood, but they were back, back painted glass. That's, that concludes the architectural presentation. Do you have any questions? Or I can pass it along to the landscape architect. <clears throat> okay, we'll start with Councillor Asmussen. Well, thank you for the presentation. Very detailed. I appreciate it. I guess one of my things I've said to some of the presentations before is about more iconic looking buildings. I know you've done some features in here, but it's still a very linear square. And, and you know, this is part of the entrance to Coquitlam along the North Road. So as I've said to other developers, I'd like to see if we move forward with this, some more modifications, more um, iconic looking to the shape of the building going up. I know you've done some nice things around the bottom, but I think we're just trying to create a little more iconic, a little more, I think, I think I'll take, I'll steal, may I? the wow factor into Coquitlam as Councillor Reed's there so I just had to ask permission to to use that phrase but that's what we're looking for so that's one of the one takeaways I'd like you to, to look at uh, depending on how far this where this goes I just I like a lot of things you've done here I think the road access transportation but I that's my one thing I'd like to see a little more detail on the design of the building that's all mm -hmm. okay uh, Councillor Zerillo yeah, hi. Just some clarification on the parking. So we have two entrances to parking, one from Whiting and one from Brookmere? No, it's, no. the only entrance is off of Whiting. Okay. So I saw an arrow Brookmere uh, resident parking, it said. Oh, that's yeah. That's not actually an access point. Right here. Because the, the site is so steep, yeah. um, we were able to slope the slabs so that it goes underneath the commercial. Okay. So that's the corner where that arrow is pointing. The slab for the parking goes beneath that re uh, retail unit. Okay. So if people are coming to use the retail, they will also enter in this mm -hmm. location? Yeah, they would also enter off where it said the arrow that shows access to parking and loading. Then they would park at the retail parking level and then walk through that corridor in the center. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Uh, out to the sidewalk on North Road and then residents of the building would care, continue underneath that retail unit that would be gated from the uh, retail. So there's no confusion where retail parking is and residential parking. That was my next question. We have heard some um, stories of, of break-ins in, in the parking in these towered buildings. So what kind of safety measures are in place for, for residents as far as parking and access to to people yeah we have gate it'll be gated so you and will there be a camera uh, potentially okay get but, but it is gated so you need a fob to get in so um, that should be okay so possible. free access for residential but it'll be um, gated for or sorry free access for retail but it'll be gated for residential. yeah that's right after hours there'll be a gate um, 
where the driveway comes in and it turns at 90 degrees, there will be a gate there that shuts at after hours, after retail hours. So it's basically a secondary so line of defense. Too. Okay, so then my other point was just a little bit about the landscaping measures for safety. Uh, is I see we have a walkway mm -hmm. on the south side. Is there any special measures that are being taken just for openness, visibility, lighting, that sort of stuff? Yeah, it'll be very well lit and all septet measures will be incorporated to ensure at night time that it's very visible. The grade is very, very um, gentle. Uh, and the trees will be high enough so that you'll be able to see a straight shot going down, so it should be very safe. Okay. Um, variances, are we anticipating to see any variances with this building? No. Okay. And I had another question that had to do with environmental assessment. I'm not sure if that's a question that you would want to answer or someone else, but we're looking at a uh, automotive shop, basically, that was at this location for quite a while. Do we have an environmental assessment already completed? Is there any remedial work that needs to be done? Yeah, that, all that work is done ahead of time, so we know what to anticipate, and it'll be planned as a part of the development. So, so, it's, the, being, so it's being done right now, so we don't have the results back yet? Oh, it's not, but they, they do test holes to see the extent of contamination and extent of soil that needs to be cleaned up, so that, that portion of the work has been done. So there is a, a report available that indicates what soils need to be replaced. So there is some work that needs to be done and it's being done right now? No, because pe the, the buildings are still on the site, so we can't do anything. Okay, but we know that there is some remedial work that needs to be done? Apparently there's some. Okay. But we do have a parkade that's going down four and a half stories, so that also takes care Gonna of it. Going to clear out a lot of soil. Yeah. Okay, and then um, about the buyer, do we have a forecasted profile? I see you have a three-bedroom suite on each floor, it looks like. Is there any um, forecast which what kind of buyers we can anticipate here? I'm asking this question because as city, we need to understand how many people will be kind of staying there, how many kids will be there, how many dogs will be there, how many... So do we expect families? Do we expect rentals? Do we expect short-term, long-term? Um, we expect long-term at this, this point. Um, the three-bedroom was a new addition to the unit mix from the original unit mix. So... Um, for downsizers specifically in the, the West Coquitlam neighborhood to move from a house de into that want more space than just your typical two bedroom. So that's you know the addition of the three bed and then uh, the, the profile seems quite mixed. It's a exciting corridor with lots of options right now. So we're trying to provide you know the one, two, three and, and with the various sizes. So each one has its own market segment. So I have a question because we're starting to have more new towers in this area and other areas of Coquitlam. Is there an opportunity for the city of Coquitlam maybe on a, a non-disclosure basis to be able to understand who the, who the buyer is as you start to sell for us to be able to do planning in the way of other amenities for the area? Yes, that's, uh, I can work with, uh, with staff and our marketing and sales division to, um, you know, the, we have, ex in. Uh, it's quite segmented at ONI. There's uh, the the sales and marketing department do have that information, and we can work with staff to, to you know, identify who the end users are and uh, and and provide that information. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. And, uh, and about the Brookmere Park, you said there's four hundred thousand dollars to go to that park. Have you thought about what's going to go there? Is it going to be upgrades to the field, or is it actually going to be uh, swings? Or has there been any discussion about what that might look like? We're waiting. It was originally uh, a $200,000 uh, upgrade to the park and 200000 to a future park, but w we felt strongly about with 220 new users, potential users in the neighborhood, that that money should go specifically to the park, and we're going to get a detailed uh, um, list from, from staff and work with them and uh, hopefully be the contractor that, that does the actual work as well. Thank you. So. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. Thanks. I just had a question about the uh, large south wall of, the, I guess, probably the the parking area. Mm -hmm. Any chance you could go back? Or actually, this slide here is so the trees along the walkway mm -hmm. are those um, planned to be tall enough that they would partially hide the the wall? 
Partially, but the, the wall the wall is all, also going to be incorporated into the art component that we're considering. So there's going to be light elements along the wall. So it's going to be enhanced. It's a it's a board formed concrete. So it's kind of a it's not just a plain co concrete wall. It's actually going to be a really interesting wall that's going to have some lighting on it, in addition to trees that um, screen off uh, other portions of the entry to the parking area. And the, would the light just be mainly in the evening then, or in in, in the dark? Yeah, evening. So during the day, what do you think it'll look like? Like I'm just, it just in the drawing, it looked like it was a fairly large, imposing wall. Um, just wondering if there's anything that can be done to not have it stand out as much. So you can see that there's horizontal lines with that end at a staggered uh, crenellation towards the right hand side. And the horizontal lines are part of the board formed concrete. Um, within that is lighting. And then you see the darker brown panel towards the bottom, which is going to be an interpretive component of the graphic that's going to be on the wall that it'll wrap the corner. So it's actually going to be an engaging wall despite the plainness that it may come across at this point. Sorry, the lights are built into the cement, is that what you said? Yeah, they're okay. built onto the wall. And so, but that won't be a really obvious during the day, just in the evening. In the evening yeah, time okay. when the lights go on. Because this is um, part of the, uh, the North Star concept, the con there's a concept that along this wall will be a kind of a constellation, which indicates the North Star, and the North Road is based on the North Star. So the, the kind of idea follows through that this wall will engage that North Star constellation light at nighttime. OK. Um. So when it's built, it won't necessarily look this plain and dull? No. OK, perfect. Um, the other question, uh, just to build on uh, Councillor Zarilla's questions about the three bedroom units. Um, so there were 10% of them, so that worked out to about 11 three bedroom units. Is that correct? Um, sorry, 22, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, how many, uh, are those included in the penthouse units too? Or are they mostly um, non-penthouse units? No, it does, doesn't include the, tent, the penthouse units. There's two penthouse units, which are also three bedroom units. Great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, while you've got the slide up here, uh, just one question. How big is the mini plaza? It looks mini. <laughs> uh, it's about, well, from the... From the inner face of where the line of the, the second row of trees are, it goes in about 20 feet, and then it's 4.8 meters plus a little bit more. It's about 30 feet, 20 by 30. Okay. The the shrubs. I have, I have trouble, trouble with the perspective of it because it does look like the mid-block pedestrian connection is made up mostly of of shrubs, but I gather it's not. In plan view, I, maybe there's a plan view that shows it better. Yeah, um, yeah, th yeah there is. Oh, there you go. No. Doesn't show any better. Okay. <laughs> I could, I could try to explain the rationale behind that. Sure. There are, there are um, if you Duron lean Fishman. in just a little bit. All right. Lean Thanks. in. Hello. Uh, Duron Fishman. I'm the uh, landscape architect um, on the project. The rationale behind this was to provide an accessible transition from Whitting Way down to North Road. And so um, it is quite a steep uh, transition. Uh, so we've got uh, ramped segments that, are, that have a landing and a, a, a bench at each landing. Um, the ground floor, the ground plane will be primarily composed of uh, plants just because, the, I mean, it is intended for you to kind of head down and through. So um, we're trying to make it as attractive as possible throughout the year. So it is primarily planted. The trees will be, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, uh, deciduous trees, which are the, have a high enough standard, meaning that the, the kind of the bushy part of the tree is, is tall enough so that you can't really hide or do anything uh, uh, undesirable in there. And then what Robert was mentioning earlier, the uh, the wall that sort of forms the backbone of this is intended to be quite an attractive, interesting wall that has a interpretive element uh, associated with it. So it will be a really nice feature once it's, uh, once it's con constructed. 
and that answers my second question was related to the uh, accessibility issues associated with a, a sidewalk both of the pedestrian mid block pedestrian and the uh, sidewalk adjacent to Brookmere that I gather are at slopes greater than uh, wheelchair ramps um, the sidewalk slopes here you're talking about on uh, along Whitting Way or uh, on this ramp well either one I guess I, I hadn't proceeded on Whitting Way I proceeded more on Brookmere but uh, or on the mid block pedestrian yeah the slopes are quite steep um, it is a, a steep portion of Coquitlam. It's a, you got to get down, you know, it, it's not, a, it's not a unique situation in the lower mainland for sure. It's, um, it is, it's got steeper elements. We've tried to kind of keep the more, the heavier pedestrian areas as, as flat as possible. Um, but there certainly will be steep elements. And there are landings, so it's not a uh, yeah. skateboard heaven. Sort sure. Of I mean, that's also another thing we incorporated into the, the south connection is the, the reason why the pathway is jogged is so that somebody could get going at a pretty good clip, if you'd imagine, um, from from one side to the from the east to the west. So uh, we've jogged the walkway so that they can only get going for so far, you know so far, and then they'd have to stop and, yep. and cut over. So I thank you for that, yeah. Councillor Reed. Thank you. Um, I have one sensible question and then a couple of comments. The sensible question is to do with um, your loading area. And I see on attachment five, you've got loading slash truck maneuvering area. So is there just one loading bay for people moving in and out? And is this shared with the commercial? Uh, no, the commercial has its own loading bay. And then residential has um, a van loading within the uh, par retail parking area. So I'm looking at, um, I guess, would the loading truck maneuvering area that I'm looking at on attachment five, which is, okay. Yeah, so commercial loading I'm is the beige. I'm looking down here, I guess. Commercial loading in the beige area at the bottom right. So yeah. is that is that for the commercial yeah. or is that for the residential? Oh, that's for the commercial. And so the residential loading bay for movers is up by the tower? Yeah, it's just about where it says retail parking. There's another beige area. Perfect. That's where the vans go. That answers go. my question. Thank you. And as I have some of my favorite architects here, I'm looking for curves and pointy things and anything but square. I know this is the Madonna concert. Uh, the Madonna, yeah. Um, the wow factor. Um, <laughs> uh, Councillor O'Neill, you're out of order. You're out of order. Again. <laughs> I... Um, I know this is going to be a beautiful building, but it's the entrance to my city, and it's really important to me. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to. I realize this is just zoning, but when it comes back, form and function, I'm, I'm looking for something wonderful. I love the, um, the historic elements that you're putting into the building. I think that's a really, very tasteful. Thank you. Sure. And to the point, I think that this will be an iconic building. I think, you know, you'll, there will be pointy parts on the roof. I mean, it's a very sculpted roof overhang that enhances the, the penthouses as the building steps back. Basically, the tower is in two portions. There's the tallest portion that has the roof on top of it, and then the low, lower portion of the tower before it steps back, which has a different yellow coloration, which is reminiscent of the, of the wood that's detailed on the base of the building. It's going to be fairly simple and square, and I think within the detailing of something that's classic and squarish, you can also get something fairly iconic that has an offset to some of these other things that we see that are quite curvilinear and have other shapes. So uh, I think that uh, it, there's... Well, that's for another night's discussion, but I don't think you and I will ever go shopping together. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we, we could do that. Thank you. Thanks. And our next questions come from Council's music critic, Councillor O'Neill. Thank you very much. Um, the, um, I wonder, is there any thought, and maybe the developer, not the architect, would have to deal with this. Um, is there any thought on this to have a covenant in place from the owner that would uh, prevent uh, the Strata Council from banning rentals or, or keeping rentals to a minimum? Is this going to be a wide open building? Uh, for rentals, have you thought that thing through? Because it's a very, it's, the availability of rental housing is uh, on council's mind a lot. And uh, what are your thoughts on this tower? That would be a question I'd take back to the directors to uh, get you an answer. So, I, yeah, no, there hasn't been any discussion. There'll be market units at this point, and 
that's that's been the direction for, for the project from the beginning. Yeah, well, I know it's, it's a kind of a market decision as well, whether or not you think that your units will sell better with or without a restrictive covenant on it or something, but I, Council has always uh, has been expressing a lot of um, support for buildings that um, uh, that um, are, will remain open to, to rental uh, and not have um, a strata council come in and uh, preclude that possibility from happening. And that apparently can be put into place when you guys still control the building. Um, something personally I'd like to see, but up to you obviously. And We're not displacing any rental people here because this, there's no building going down. Um, so it's not as big of an issue as it would be somewhere else, but it's still something to think about. Yeah, yeah I'll take that back to the, to the group. Thank you very much. Okay, and I believe staff, uh, Mr. McIntyre may have a comment related to staff council's direction has been probably more related to those buildings where rental replacement is a consideration, and yes. this one obviously isn't. Mr. McIntyre. Uh, yes, Your Worship, and uh, thanks. Good evening. Uh, that's true. It's come up very recently with uh, another project just a little further up North Road where there were uh, our, our, uh, existing rental uh, units on the site, so it was more sort of top of mind. But certainly we can go back and, and talk with the applicant. Uh, we're receiving uh, valuable feedback on a number of aspects to the project. I think we'll want to follow up with the applicant and we'll uh, sort that out before it comes back for fourth reading consideration if council supports the, the bylaws. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there any speakers for this item? Are there any speakers for this item? And this is the third and final time. Are there any other speakers for this item? Please come forward. Please come forward. Now you'll take the microphone there. You'll state your name and your address for the record. And uh, you have five minutes. Uh, hi, my name is Hector. Uh, my address is 1369 M Crescent. You have to give your last name too, sorry. Oh, Hector Alcala. Do you want me to spell that? Yes, please. A-L-C-A-L-A. -A -A. Okay, Hector, go ahead. Oh, it's just like a question for the architect. Is um, is the SkyTrain the SkyTrain is going to be running uh, running on North Road? Yeah, so SkyTrain runs up North Road. I, I think it will be really interesting if we can see in the renderings how the SkyTrain is going to be affecting the elevation of the building, and as well as there's going to be any consideration of the noise of the SkyTrain on the building. I think it will be really good for the people living there and. The other question is because actually a few years ago I was living in one in a real similar tower. Uh, I have my own bike and it was kind of a problem because I was not allowed to take my bike into my apartment, into my unit. And if like a city are we promoting like using like, like, like bikes as a way of transportation and taking into consideration that it's really close to the uh, to the SkyTrain station, I think it will be nice if they can present like a, a program to integrate uh, like cycle, bicycles and cycling into the building and into also into the uh, into the into the parking into them into the improvement that they are doing to the to the Brookmer Park. I'm looking for that. Thanks. Um, there is. A 282 uh, bike spaces in the building. 282, is that correct? Uh, I see any nods. Oh, this is unusual, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. You're correct. There is there is a uh, bike storage in the lower levels of the parkade. And can I ask his question? Answer the question about the acoustics. What? Sure. Go ahead. We have an acoustical consultant who reviews all the buildings. Uh, so there, if there's any uh, enhanced window treatment required. Uh, due to the SkyTrain sound, that will be incorporated into the project. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, are there any other speakers to this item? Any other speakers to this item? This is the third and final time. Any other speakers to this item? Seeing none, I'll declare this item closed. Thank you, Worship. The next item, uh, item two, is an application to amend the City Coquitlam Zoning Bylaw in order to add defined veterinary service to C1 local commercial zone as a site-specific permitted use at 658 Clark Road. This is bylaw number 4566.
Good evening once again, Your Worship and members of Council. Item 2 on tonight's agenda is for a text amendment application to amend the C1 local commercial zone. The application proposes to add veterinary services as a permitted use to this zone. However, with the condition that it only be permitted at a specific location, 658 Clark Road. <clears throat> the subject property is located on the northeast corner of Clark Road and Morrison Avenue. And the site is bound by Clark Road to the west, Morrison Avenue to the south, a lane to the east, and a single family property to the north. In addition to adding veterinary services as a permitted use within the C1 zone at this particular location, the amendment would also establish new definitions for veterinary services and pet care services. These uses are already permitted in the zoning bylaw, and the definitions seek to add clarity to the uses for staff and the public. Subsequently, additional amendments are proposed um, to insert the new definitions within all the zones where the uses are permitted in place of the existing terminology. At this time, staff are recommending all final readings to the bylaw. Thank you. Councillor Reed on the question of where um, it's being indutory. Thank you. So I just threw uh, you, Your Worship, to Mr. McIntyre. Where does where is veterinary service in? I'm trying to look it up quickly, but can't. If it's not in C1, in C2? Where would it normally reside in, in which category? Uh, which, which zone? Th thank you, Your Worship. Where we are currently permitted veterinary services, though we have not defined it, the bylaw is proposing That's to define fine. it. We are, the, the use is permitted in our uh, general commercial zones and all of our C, most of our C zones. Right. Okay, so it, most of the C zones, but not C1. I, I'm just wondering, like, I, I think this is a great place for, for this use, but I'm wondering if when someone comes up to the counter in City Hall, I don't want to be turning people away if it's not, you know, exactly the, the right zone, because I think this is probably a really good use, so we don't then. With regard to this particular bylaw, staff are proposing only to amend it to permit it on this particular site, site specific. because of the access, the unique access. Not all of our C1 zone sites have this very good access onto the site. And so this use, given the type of trips and the time of day that these trips would be generated, that was a concern to staff. So we wanted to specifically limit it to the site because we were concerned about how the issues would impact other C1 zone sites in the city. Okay, thank you. Um, how tightly limited is veterinary services? This isn't a dog kennel. These are not dog daycare. These are not uh, noise making veterinary services, I trust. Is, well, no. <laughs> I suppose they could be if you spay and neuter as well, but um, Ms. Tiffany. Your Worship, um, veterinary services may typically have overnight stays for a, a, an animal that needs a little longer term care before it's released back to its caregiver, its owner. So um, it, it's not certainly not a kenneling type use, but it does have on occasion a, veterinar a veterinarian may want to keep its uh, animal that it's keeping for an overnight stay or two. Got it, but that's not its function. Its primary function is the medical care. Got it. Correct. Okay. Seeing none, no speakers, right? Are there any speakers to this item? Please, sir, step forward. Good evening. Uh, my name is Graham Hill, uh, 581 Thompson Avenue, and I'm representing the views of the Very Coquitlam well. Community Association. So we've, sure. we've got our heads together, and uh, I just make this very short and sweet. We endorse this project. Uh, I think it's a very good one. We've gone over the uh, staff recommendations, agree with them entirely. Um, the only thing we would add is that it would be a tremendous shame for for us to lose this facility to some other area because of some wording changes. I think that would be uh, would be horrible given the the history and the uh, the decades that uh, the uh, Riquitlam Animal Hospital has been in the area. Um, to me, it's uh, already a no-brainer and. Uh, we do support it 100%. That's it. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you very much for that from the Brook Whitlam Community Association. Any other speakers to this item? Any other speakers to this item? The third and final time, any other speakers to this item? I'll declare this item closed. Thank you, Your Worship. The next item, item three, is an application to amend the City of Coquitlam Zoning Bylaw in order to rezone the properties at 3410 Queenston Avenue and 1375 Coast Meridian Road from RS2, one family suburban residential, to RS7, small village, single family residential, and RTM1, street oriented village home residential. The bylaw before you is bylaw number 4564. Good evening, Your Worship, and members of Council. This site is located on the south side of Queenston Avenue and east of Coast Meridian Road. The southern portion of the site is designated small village, single family under the city's official community plan and the northern portion of the site designated street oriented village home. Zoning on the site and to the east is RS2, one family suburban residential. Zoning to the north, RS2 and P5 special park. To the west, RS7, small village, single family, and south, RS2, and RS8, large village, single family. The applicant is requesting rezoning from RS2, one family, suburban residential, to RS7, small village, single family, and RTM1, street-oriented village, home residential, to facilitate subdivision of nine single family lots under the RS7 zoning, and four street-oriented village home lots under the RTM1 zoning. The proposed rezonings are in concurrence with the OCP land use designations. As a result, staff are recommending second and third readings to bylaw number 4564. Thank you, Ms. Tiffany. Ms. Tiffany. Are there any speakers to this item? Are there any speakers to this item? Please step forward. Hi, my name is Mitzi Merano, and my address is Juan Resic and Hames Crescent in Coquitlam. Um, so I live in the intersection of Hames and Corva, and I have talked to a few of my neighbors, and I think that I can express the general concern that we have that when we originally purchased our properties um, in this road, we were mentioned by the developer that it was going to stay as a private road, and now I think that the plan includes making like a second lane on Corba and opening the way on Hames Crescent. So my concern is that like the view of my property and the privacy, it's gonna be altered after this development, if this development moves forward, given that we have trees facing on Corba right now. Uh, so as for my understanding, everything is gonna, is gonna come down and no green space is like no green belt is going to be there anymore. Okay, I'm Okay, first of all, uh, you mentioned private road. There are we, we don't have private roads in, in development areas. They're all public roads yeah. and they'll all end up being about 66 feet or about 20 meters wide. Uh, and um, I don't know what um, your the vendor told you prior to your purchase. Um, we're, we're, of course, regulated by our, uh, our bylaws, and our bylaws specify the width of roads, and, and I believe this is in keeping with that. Uh, I have no reason to believe otherwise. I'll, actually, I'll hand that over to, to staff for, uh, for that. Mr. Johansson. Yes, through to your worship, uh, the subdivision plan and uh, proposed road network is uh, uh, based on the Smiling Creek uh, neighborhood plan conceptual road uh, network for public streets. And also along the uh, north side of Corba, uh, there will be um, a SPIA area, streamside protection area, uh, that will uh, be for East Watkins Creek, if I uh, understand the question correctly. so that. Uh, side north side of Corba will have uh, vegetation retained there as part of that 10 meter setback from the stream. So there is a vegetative buffer to some degree That's on, correct. on the other side of Corba um, and then residential after that. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I don't understand exactly what the vegetation is going to be uh, kept. Like, I don't know if someone can like point it out and. On Corba. 
I'm having trouble. Uh, I'm looking at attachment two. We have a, attachment one uh, shows an ortho that includes uh, the SPIA you're referring to. All right, try and get some something up. Yeah. Maybe on attachment two might show it better. Section of like Hames and Corva, so these are garage, right? Yeah. So you live here? No, right here in this corner. Corner. Okay. So right now this is like all trees. So my concern is if they are all gonna come down, given that the garages are gonna be facing the pro these two properties. Okay, we're just letting them dialogue to make sure we understand the question, and then we'll get an answer. Yeah, like all the loss of vegetation like, along this way. Okay. The, the site plan. Through your worship, I think I I have an understanding here on the uh, east side of of Hames. Um, if we look at attachment three, the the properties that are already developed there. Uh, with this development, those street trees will be retained. It's actually outside the scope of the development, and the property across the street is uh, also outside of that, um, but in the neighborhood plan is, is also uh, identified for future development. So I hope that clarifies things. Okay. So the L-shaped property, we're only talking about the short segment at the top tonight and at some point some other application. That's correct, yeah. And, and again, the north side of Corba that's within the application that's being considered tonight will have uh, vegetation retained as a part of that streamside setback. And um, I imagine that as the property to the south comes in, there will also be some other environmental considerations as a part of that. So it's likely that uh, some vegetation retention would be uh, required there as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other speakers to this item? Are there any other speakers to this item? Councillor Hodge. Okay, similar question. I just want to make sure that I have this clear. I'm actually looking at attachment two. Um, so I'm going back because I find that maybe a little easier to illustrate than the color. Next one over, I think. I think it's the next one. This one here. So looking at the uh, the strip of green that's sort of following up uh, by Hames, I, I realize that's the property that we're to the south, but I'm guessing that this would extend at Watkins, uh, the uh, SPI around Watkins would extend up there and sort of parallel Hames across the street. Is that sort of what the community plan would show? Yes, through your worship to Councillor Hodge. Um, yes, that the site there is um, with the green strip there in the, uh, I guess it would be the dark orange, uh, reddish color there is a uh, P5 special park and identified as an environmental area in the Smiling Creek uh, plan. So that's been uh, zoned as that as part of that, that development. But that is the leg of the East Watkins Creek. Right. And uh, the idea is that over time uh, that that area would be uh, retained uh, to allow for water flow into the uh, Watkins Creek system according to the IWMP or Integrated Watershed Management Plan. Right, so it, it will sort of come up parallel Hames and then I guess sort of bisect this the property we're talking about tonight in the, in the lower sort of southeast corner of what we'll call the L shape, so right above Corbett, and then it will cut through there following uh, where the creek currently shows on attachment one, is that correct? So this, this sort of green strip will then continue up where that, uh, where that uh, blue uh, watercourse is showing. 
Yes, that's a, it's a possibility. We, again, we would have to look at that in terms of the actual uh, dimensions and, and characteristics of that uh, when that application comes in and it's reviewed by staff and there's a qualified environmental professional that takes a look at that. Uh, but it's, uh, the idea is to uh, retain stream flow throughout that system. And that will come up at the development permit stage then? That's correct. And I assume that then there will have to be, Hames will somehow have to cross that. So there will have to be some kind of culvert or bridge. That's or correct, yes, there is a culvert planned, yep. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, Councillor Wilson. Thanks. On lot number nine, um, the lot that's on Queenston and Hames, um, in our, is there anything stopping um, the resident from parking to the west of their garage? I don't know sorry. if there's a larger, a larger view of those lots. Um, you, sorry, Councillor Wilson, can you identify lot number nine? Lot right. number nine, well, it's that, maybe, maybe we can go to a different, uh, a different slide there. Is there a slide that has just that upper uh, Maybe they're not on the I like screen. it, but uh, attachment five, but it's a different one. Oh, okay. Attachment five the, in our the, package. Yeah, if, corner you, of if, if you give us one second, we can pull it off the website version of the report. The first, the furthest west of the RTM one stuff. Well, we can put it up on the, the fee simple uh, yeah, but, row houses. So my question is the the, uh, the garage at the southwest corner. Um, is there anything uh, preventing the the homeowner from parking a car beside that garage? I'm assuming it will most likely be grass, but could they pave it or put gravel there so that they didn't have to do tandem parking? Through your worship. Um, since these are RTM1 lots, we would review, it would, a, a development permit would be required so through, through the development permit group, yeah, can't even get it out, my apologies. <laughs> through the development permit process, we would review that um, to ensure that how that is designed on the corner, the proper treatments are provided so that it ensures that the parking is provided in the appropriate areas. Um, so, so, um, if they um, proposed to put a driveway in beside the garage for that, that lot number nine, uh, is that something that the city would oppose or support, in your opinion? So additionally, there's also a minimum side yard setback for accessory off-street parking of three meters. So in conjunction with the zoning bylaw regulations as well as the development permit review to see how that design treatment is handled on that corner um, would pro hopefully provide those assurances that no parking would occur in that corner and, then the, and the parking would actually occur in the designated spaces. So they, they do the tandem parking and so, you know, two years after they move in, um, if they started parking beside their garage uh, and somebody complained, our bylaws department would go by and, and Okay. Correct. Thanks. In that regard, um, okay, so even if they were to take the driveway, which currently is, what, about 8 feet wide, and make it 12 feet wide, which is enough typically to squeeze that car, that second car right off to the side to allow the drive, that would still require a development permit for the additional pavement. It's a regulation in the zoning bylaw with respect to the location of parking and, and where that parking would be located. So it's a minimum of three meters, an exterior side large setback. I, I get that, but okay. it, the, the, the regulation doesn't apply to, say, a 12-foot wide driveway. So I'm just trying to understand. I know where, I, I know where Councillor Wilson's going, is, I think. I, I think, okay, I, 
is to try to find My apologies, Your Worship. I think I understand where your question is now. So you're, essentially the question is, can we make that pad wider yeah. to accommodate more parking on the pad? The answer to that is yes. They would still be within that three-meter setback. So it could be made, I'm just guesstimating here by looking at the site plan, probably about another meter or two. Yeah, typically a meter. My car is five feet wide, so right. that leaves that would leave a lot. So that solve your problem. Well, or does it provide a does it gave it, me an answer. Does it provide a potential solution? <laughs> Sorry, just trying to come up with a solution to avoid tandem parking. But yep, thanks. Okay, so a wider pad is one of those things that might. Okay, Councillor Zarillo. Um, do we have any anticipated variances for any of these? As outlined in the report, we are anticipating two variances. One is with respect to the building size for the allowable garage length. Um, from 6.3 meters to 6.7 meters and the second is for building setbacks uh, for unit type A uh, from the principal building to the exterior side lawn from three meters to two and a half meters. Okay. And that's on page so four of the report. I think I um, mentioned before about the, the size of garages and, and I'm particularly concerned about the, the tandem. So I just need to understand um, are the three for the for the pieces here that are allowed a secondary suite? Are there three easily accessible driveways that are are not tandem? Like, is there three easily access, accessible driveway um, pads? One of them could be a garage, but as long as the garage isn't tandem, I just want to understand that three cars can get out without moving somebody's car. Mr. Dranson. Through to your worship to Councillor Zarillo. Uh, so for any lot, the R7 lot, single family homes that have suites, or a suite each lot, uh, they are required to have three parking spaces. Mm -hmm. So on these lots, typically you can get a double garage uh, that fronts onto a lane or has a, a driveway apron going onto the street and a parking pad or space on the driveway for the the uh, third space. Yeah, so it's tandem, right? Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Now, we'll do it one more time. I want to do it. Councillor Reed. I want to talk about the parking again. I thought that when you had a parking for a secondary suite, it had to have its own little pad away from the... Um, oh, I saw his hand leap up. I thought it had to be away from the main driveway. Or at least not conflict with the main driveway. Right. Mr. Johansson. Yes, um, on a, in a lane situation, you would have, just in the two situations, one where you're serving it off a lane, one off a street. Off the lane, you have a double garage that has direct access to the lane, and beside the garage, you would have uh, the parking pad uh, for the suite. So there would be no tandem situation there. That's right. Right. So each of the three cars, they have free reign to get on the lane. Um, with um, uh, a street-oriented house, uh, you would have a driveway apron with, you know, likely a double garage and a driveway that could be designed to have the space on the driveway or slightly offset so it's not in a tandem situation, depending on the lot and the house design. Well, here we go, and this is why we have the problems we're having with parking. If we don't have a separate suite, a, a separate spot for a suite, I, I just, this just isn't making any sense. No tenant is going to park behind the owner so that someone always has to move. It just isn't going to work. And, you know, I, I get these reports, and I'll tell you, I get one. How will off-street and on-street parking be accommodated for the single-family home and duplex? Well, there shouldn't be any consideration for the on-street parking because that shouldn't be affecting what we're doing on the site. If people are going to have a suite, they need to provide parking for it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be tandem. If it's a front entry, I'm talking front loading. Back, I get it. But the front loading, no. So... 
Can he comment? He's looking yep, at. Yep, certainly can. I'm working on his answer. This is wrong. Ask how long that rule has been in place. Mr. Johansson. Yes, uh, through the Councillor Reed, uh, we have details regarding that. Um, Ms. Tiffany can speak to that in terms of how the zoning bylaw uh, regulates that. And then I can throw in a couple comments about uh, how we look at the development servicing and building. Well, it stage. used to be that way. So how long has this new, new one been in place with the smaller lots? Is that what happened? Ms. Tiffany. I'm just recollecting when those amendments were brought forward to council. I believe it may have been about five or six years ago. Okay. So you, we're, we're allowing them, and that's why we're. That that's is part of the reason we're having all the parking problems up in the northeast. It's a good part of the reason. So this one won't be going. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's been expressed a number of times concern on council that uh, the tandem space uh, on the driveway apron could perhaps be used for visitors parking, but not for regular um, parking of a vehicle that belongs on that property. So it becomes a real challenge because we know that parking space will not be used for the permanent vehicle. It'll park somewhere else and everyone's going to be in the same boat. And I see Mr. Johansson has put his hand up and just a second. Your Worship. Mr. Johans. If I may. Um, just responding to the uh, the comments there. Um, out of the RS7 lots proposed, we have eight of them that are lane served. So they would have the direct access to the lane for their garages and the suite parking. Um, on the east side of Hames, those two lots are the ones that have the driveway uh, access. Uh, so we could look at that as at the development servicing stage and building permit stage to make sure that the driveway access and design works for that and for the duplex as well. So we can take that into consideration. This is second and third. Are you proposing to try to solve this? <laughs> Always. <Ms>. Always. <laughs> I, I think, Your Worship, that what we're, what we're suggesting is that there is an opportunity on these RS7 lots to get three side-by-side -side parking spots along the lane, and that it doesn't necessarily, because the zoning bylaw does permit for secondary suite parking spaces to be on the driveway, it doesn't preclude that ability to look at alternative options, which are to ensure that there's three fully accessible parking spaces on these RS7 lots. And that we would look at that, um, we certainly look at that as part of uh, the review, not normally part of a development permit review, which is what, what, what we'd be doing as part of the RTM1 zoning, but we would look at that as part of the review um, prior to bringing it back for fourth reading. Mr. McIntyre. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, we got it. There's, there's mounting um, concern about this. The difficulty we have right now, because there was a time when you couldn't have that counted as parking for secondary suites, and there were there were the, there were the bylaw amendments, and I think Eric is right. It was about five years ago. Um, so that's what we, that's what we have right now. But with with council's uh, indulgence, what we can do, as uh, Eric and Carl suggested, there's a, there is a DP coming back for the RTM one. We can look at the details of the RS7, uh, those lots, and we don't have those layouts here now. But given the width of those those proposed lots, the location of the the garages, the length of driveway, the width of driveways, it may not be as tight for for vehicle parking and maneuvering as. Uh, uh, it might be concerned. So if, if council <clears throat> would like, we can bring additional information back in that regard around the parking on those RS7 lots. Okay, the, um, tonight's consideration at council is for third reading only, so we've got some staff have uh, indicated they understand the issue. Um, 
and that they're willing to move forward on it. Councillor Reed, anything else on that? Yes, I have lots else. Um, it will be all to do with parking, though. We've been, we've been discussing all the parking challenges that we're having right now, and it's not fair that someone can have a, a suite and then just um, use the taxpayer's parking spot on the road. That's just not fair, and it's not fair to the neighbours up there. Um, I believe that staff was looking into bringing some changes to our parking regulations up there, were you not? Because I, I, I expected that they were sort of ongoing and things that we could easily do, and this is one that we can easily do, things along that line. <clears throat> and if not, we're just going to have to stop squishing every square foot of living space onto a lot and leave appropriate parking. So if someone comes in with 20 units and the bare minimum of parking, they can go home with 18 and lots of parking. So I, I've, I've sort of had it with the parking up there because we are not doing favors to either the new residents or the residents that are already there with these regulations. So I'm done. Thank you. <clears throat> Your Worship, again, uh, we get it. We hear it. Um, to Council Reed's question about the parking study, there was uh, there was a request for that, and um, we we in planning are uh, trying to coordinate that that review with transportation planning and engineering. Uh, it'll probably be something later in the year before we'd be in a position to report back. But in the meantime, uh, we can provide the council with additional detailed information on this site and any subsequent applications coming forward. We'll make sure there's a lot better uh, detail around this so it can be sh sh seen in the, the site plans, just what's being proposed, will it work or not. And if the council has ongoing concerns, we will come back to that through the staff review. Okay. Now, are there any other speakers to this item? Are there any other speakers to this item? A third and final time. Sir, yes. My name is Hector Alcala, 1369 Him Crescent. Uh, I think this issue about the parking and also what uh, we were asking about the, the green space that they were going to respect, it will be so much easier if the developer or the owner presents to the neighbors and to the council a better floor plan of what they're planning to do, like a clear, clear side plan of where they're going to have the parking spots and where they're going to respect the green areas, like the existing of what they're, or what they're thinking to do with the area. So I hope that for future applications, you request a better site plan. Thanks. Okay, I'm just going to let you know that uh, when, we, when we zone for single family homes, we don't know what the shape the building is because that's not something we're allowed to give development permits for. We only simply zone the land for the land use and the subdivision. Um, so that's different from, of course, the RTM. Um, the single family is, is, a, is a reality that we are trying to make sure the lots are big enough so that parking can be appropriate. Are there any other speakers to this item? Yes. My name is Yesenka Petek Fitzko. Do I need to spell that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, our clerk, our clerk says he knows what how to spell, how to spell that. <laughs> Go ahead. Yesenka, J E S E N K A, Petek Fitzko, P E T E K hyphen F I C K O. We just want to make sure we represent the speaker appropriately in the minutes for the historical record that she's now part of. There you go. Thank you. The, the, address, the address is 801 3920 Hastings Street. Yep. I have been um, retained by the developer to design the fourplex, the RTM1. Um, so I don't know if I can alleviate any issues in terms of the parking. Um, those, uh, the fourplex that's designed for the RTM1 lot, the actually lots 9 through 12, um, those are um, designed in mind not to accommodate the secondary suite. So there will be um, single family residence on each lot. 
Um, and I don't know if that helps in any of the parking situation. Uh, furthermore, uh, there probably can be done something in regards to the garages. Um, the issue here that um, we encountered is the, the size of the accessory parking. So what we see on the um, site plan is the basically maximum allowable accessory parking size. And if we need to accommodate more, we will need to ask for a variance for the accessible parking. Uh, sorry, <laughs> to, for the for the um, for the garage size. Okay. Councillor Hodge, did you have? Yes, I had a question. Um, I'm, I'm looking at lot nine and twelve, mm -hmm. um, where the only parking they have is the garage and the pad behind. Essentially, that means if somebody's in, parked in the, on the pad, whoever's <laughs> in the garage is blocked in. So that certainly doesn't work if there's a, if there's a secondary suite. Um, you said that there's no plan to have uh, secondary suites, uh, and how, how is that going to be insured? I mean, you know, is it through design? I'm just wondering how, you know, we, we sell them this way, but everybody, the realtor then sort of says, oh, and by the way, you know, you can make a secondary suite here. So, you know, I'm looking at this, and my main concern is I, there's not enough parking for a secondary suite. If there's no secondary suite, this might work. So how do we make sure we don't create a future problem? The access, the, the um, plan has been designed in such a way that the access to the basement, it's basically in the central location of the floor plan. So you would, if someone would want to create a secondary suite, they would have to put a hallway through their living room or dining room. So there's no outside access to the basement? No. Or is there, there, is no, there access? No. There's no access, outside no access. access. To, no. So there's no stairwell going down? There's no stairwell. No. Okay. Just window wells, which are basically four feet. Okay. Window wells front and back and the two side end units, obviously. But no front outside access to the basement. These have to be really friendly people if you want them in your basement. Correct. Okay. Mr. Johansson had something. Through your worship, um, just for clarification, the RTM one zone does not permit secondary suites. Yes, we, we're, I guess the question was more whether it's precluded by zoning or by reality. By design. In this case, by both, I suspect. Yep. Um, and that obviously wasn't Mr. Johansson, that was Mrs. Tiffany. Yep. <laughs> for the folks at home who just heard a voice they can't see. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you. We're good. So. The, the four townhouses are would require the two spaces each, not a third, not a third space. Oops, I see Ms. Tiffany. Thank you again, Your Worship. For clarity, the the RTM one zone requires one space. We are asking the developer to provide two spaces in tandem form, plus the additional parking pads on the sites next to lot 10 and 11. Okay, something we can look at later. And the frontages without the driveways allow, I know we're not putting focus on on-street parking, but there's ability for four spaces on the east side of Hames and three to four spaces on Queenston as well. Yep. Okay. Okay, are there any other speakers to this item? Are there any other speakers to this item? Third and final time, are there any other speakers to this item? Seeing none, I'll declare this item and the public hearing closed. Five minute break. We'll have a short break while staff reconfigure tape machines and then we'll get going. <laughs>